I now give the floor to His Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. Mr. President of the General Assembly, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our world is in dangerous waters. Scientists tell us that the global sea level is now rising faster than at any time in the last 3,000 years and accelerating. The rate of increase has more than doubled since the 1990s. They tell us the cause is clear. Greenhouse gases, overwhelmingly from burning fossil fuels, are hitting our planet, expanding seawater and melting ice. But they cannot tell us where this will end. That is down to world leaders today. Their choices will determine the scale, pace, and impact of future sea level rise. Temperature increases over 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels could take the world past dangerous tipping points, potentially leading to long-term irreversible collapse of the Greenland and West Antarctica ice sheets. In the worst-case scenario, people alive, could, alive today could witness sea levels rise by meters. Excellencies, Low-lying coastal zones are home to around 900 million people. For them, rising seas mean a rising tide of misery. More intense storm surges, coastal erosion, and coastal flooding. Communities swamped freshwater contaminated, crops ruined, infrastructure damaged, biodiversity destroyed, and economies decimated, with sectors such as fisheries, agriculture, and tourism pummeled. The poorest and most vulnerable are hardest hit. I saw this recently in the Pacific, where cyclones are tearing, out, are tearing chunks out of island economies. In 2015, Vanuatu suffered damage equivalent to well over half its GDP. Meanwhile, in Panama, hundreds of island families have been relocated to the mainland. In Bangladesh, Salt water is polluting drinking water, killing crops, and creating a health threat that can be deadly, particularly for pregnant women. In the city of St. Louis in Senegal, homes, schools, small businesses, and mosques have reportedly been abandoned to the encroaching tide. Such events are reproduced across the globe. This is what climate injustice looks like. This is the face of inequity. But the rich are not immune. Advanced economies are spending billions in damages and adaptation. And without rapid action, we're in for much worse. As the title of today's debate reminds us, for some, this could be existential. Whole islands lost. Coastal communities destroyed as lands become uninhabitable and uninsurable. Mass displacement can pile pressure on scarce resources elsewhere, inflaming already dire situations. Global trade, food systems, and supply chains will be battered as ports are damaged and agricultural land and fisheries ruined. Rising seas will reshape not only coastlines, but economies, politics, and security too. Excellencies, one drastic action to reduce emissions can limit sea level rise. And only drastic action to adapt 
can keep people safe from rising waters. Everyone must be protected by an alert system by 2027 in line with our early warnings for all initiative. And all countries must deliver new national climate action plans or national determined contributions well ahead of COP30 next year. These must align with 1.5 degrees, cover all sectors of the economy, and put us on track to phase out fossil fuels fast and fairly. The G20, responsible for around 80% of global emissions, must lead and align their fossil fuel production and consumption plans with 1.5 degrees. Money is indispensable. We need a strong finance outcome at COP29 this year, including on new and innovative sources of capital. We need significant contributions to the new loss and damage fund as a step towards climate justice. We need developed countries to double adaptation finance to at least 40 billion US dollars a year by 2025 and to show how they will close the adaptation finance gap. And we need reform of the multilateral development banks to become bigger, bolder, and able to deliver far more affordable finance for developing countries. We made real progress at the Summit of the Future. We must keep driving that forward, including at the World Summit for Social Development and the Financing for Development Conference next year. We must also address gaps in our international legal framework concerning sea level rise to ensure continuing access to resources while protecting existing maritime boundaries as well as to protect affected persons and in extreme scenarios to address the implications related to statehood. Excellencies, we cannot leave the hopes and aspirations of billions of people dead in the water. We cannot allow the wholesale destruction of countries and communities. It's time to turn the tide and save ourselves from rising seas. Thank you.